नमस्ते वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग टेक्निक्स कोर्स इन दिस वीडियो विल इंप्लीमेंट लिस्ट स्क्वायर क्लासिफायर फ्रॉम स्क्रैच सो देर आर टू पार्ट्स इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट विल इंप्लीमेंट द लिस्ट स्क्वायर क्लासिफायर एंड इन द सेकेंड पार्ट विल डेमॉन्स्ट्रेट लिस्ट स्क्वायर क्लासीफायर ऑन फोर डिफरेंट यूज केसेस इन द फर्स्ट केस विल यूज लीनियरली सेपरेबल बाइनरी क्लासिफिकेशन सेटअप In the second step, in the second setup, we will add outliers to this linearly separable binary classification and understand its effect on least square classifier. Then we will look at the multi-class setup and see how to perform multi-class classification with least square classifier. And finally, we'll try to uh, perform least square classification on non-linearly separable data set. where we have to use polynomial uh, transformation so let's begin by by looking at some of or by recalling some of the points from from the theory course from the theory class so you know that least square classification is used for estimating parameters of discriminant functions uh, from the given training set uh, it adopts linear regression model for classification it uses this square error as a loss function uses normal equation method and gradient descent for estimating model parameters and since it is a classification algorithm it uses classification related evaluation metrics such as precision recall f1 score uh, auc under roc and pr curves and and accuracy so additionally uh, we make use of polynomial feature transformation to obtain new features and mainly use it to learn non linear decision boundaries between the classes so in this case this phi is a polynomial feature transformation and we tackle the issues of overfitting by using ridge and lasso regularization just like linear regression model so while implementing a uh, least square classifier from scratch we use polynomial transformation code from the polynomial regression collab that we uh, that we discussed earlier and you know one of the main important components here is to perform uh, label encoding and this is where you know uh, this differs from a linear regression setup so even if you are doing a binary classification with least square classifier we need to perform a label encoding and this is slightly different from linear regression so in case of um, a single output linear regression problem we uh, essentially have a label vector but in case of classification even if we have a binary classification problem we need to perform label encoding and get the get each label in a one hot encoding format so that would mean that even for a binary classification problem we will have a multi output regression uh, problem like setup here the label 0 will be represented as 1 0 and label 1 will be represented as 0 1 remember this is a one hot encoding and this this scheme is also extended to multi class setup so now let's take a concrete example of a three class classification setup so label 0 will be represented as 100 label 1 will be represented as 010 and label 2 would be represented as 001 so the first position represent the label 0 the second position represent label 1 and the third position represent label 2 so if we extend this to let's say k class setup we will have one of k uh, encoding so we will get uh we will get each label in form of a vector containing k components and the the component and the label and the component corresponding to the label would be 1 and all other components uh will be 0 so we use a label transformer class to convert discrete labels into one hot encoding and we have adopted 
uh, this label transformer class from uh, PRML GitHub repo. So this label transformer class essentially uh, is constructed or initialized with number of classes and it has got an encode function that takes a label vector and converts that into one hot encoding. So let us uh, take, let us look at a couple of examples and uh, understand label transformer better. Let's take a binary classification setup. So we instantiate label transformer object with two classes and we ask it to encode a label vector of uh, four examples. The first example has label of one, second as zero, third as one and fourth has label of zero. When we call the encode function on the label transformer object with two classes, we get the following encoding. So now each label is encoded as follows. The first label since it is class 1, we have 0, 1. Second one is class 0, so that's why we have 1, 0. Remember the first component corresponds to label 0 and second component corresponds to label 1. The third example has class 1, so it is represented as 0, 1 and fourth one is class 0, is represented by 1, 0. Let's also look at the multi-class setup with three classes. Now we have a label vector where we have three classes 1, 0 and 2. Now we, first of all we instantiate the label transformer object with three classes because we have three class set up here and then we uh, call the encode function on it to encode the, the labels and there are three possible labels. So you can see that the multi-class labels uh, or the encoded label look like, uh, uh, they look like the following. So we now have a label vector containing four rows and three columns and three, uh, three columns because we have three classes. So we have one hot encoding representation for each of the label. So this is uh, one of the most important part uh, of this collab where we have to perform the label transformation. And once you perform this label transformation, rest of the code is very similar to multi-output uh, regression problem. Now with this label transformation, our training data uh, you know becomes uh, you know it, it becomes a tuple of feature matrix X and label matrix Y. Earlier it used to be label vector even in case of let's say binary classification problem but even for binary classification we will be now having a label matrix because we represent each label with one hot encoding representation. So now we have a feature matrix X of shape n comma m where n is the number of examples and m is the number of features and we have a label matrix y of shape n by k where n is the number of examples and uh, k is the number of class labels and this makes it very similar to multiple regression setup. Now we have a model where the label matrix is obtained by matrix multiplication of feature matrix and the weight matrix. And we add a dummy feature to the feature matrix. So its shapes become n into m plus 1. So we have a label matrix which is uh, of shape n comma k. We have feature matrix x which shape n comma m plus 1 and weight vector of shape m plus 1 comma k. So note that there is one weight vector per output and hence the total number of parameters that we need to estimate would be m plus 1 into k. And this is where it differs from linear regression model and this is very similar to the multiple regression setup. We have loss function. Uh, exactly like uh, the least square, it, it's in fact the least square uh, loss function where we uh, take the difference between the actual label minus the predicted label and we multiply it with itself. 
So we take square of the difference between the actual label and the predicted label, divide by half and we add the regularization term. So this is the regularized loss uh, which is a general loss function that I have written. In case you do not want to use the regularization, you can set lambda to 0 and we have a standard least square uh, loss. And you can see that this loss now has shape uh, k by k. So we can optimize this uh, loss function with a normal equation and uh, with iterative optimization and there is almost uh, no, code, no code change from our uh, linear regression, multi-output multi linear regression setup. There is some change in the inference. Now the predict function for the classification setup is expected to return a discrete quantity, unlike a real number in regression setup. So what we do is we return the class label with the largest value of linear combination of features among all classes. And our implementation works uh, for multi-class setup as well. So let's look at the least square classification um, implementation. So there is uh, one change in predict where we are going to return the output label vector based on the class that has got the highest linear combination of the features and that is achieved through this argmax function in numpy and we have another predict internal function that is implemented for uh, the purpose of the loss computation where uh, where we return the the linear combination of features and, um, and and the weights so here in the in the final predict we perform the argmax so this argmax will return the the class label for which this linear combination uh, is the highest 